Please welcome Mark Moffat to the stage. Uh -oh. oh man, so cool. I had, I had heard rumors about a super frog. The Guinness Book of World Records said that this frog can kill 500 people. You would have to cut it up just right to get the full 500 because it's only an inch long. It had been discovered in 1978 by a group of scientists working in western Colombia in a remote valley. They had uh, heard from the Indians about the frog, the Embora Choco, and the Indians warned them, do not touch the frog. Well, it turned out one of the scientists, John Daly, was a herpetologist and knew that poison dart frogs should not be touched anyway. So he wore gloves, and after a week in the village, uh, the scientists threw out their gloves in the village garbage heap, and a dog and three chickens died in the next hour. This frog, they announced in the description of the species, which is usually a tedious affair, this frog in a warning box, they say, is potentially lethal to the touch. How could I resist? <laughs> Gotta check it out. Well, I'm arranging the trip and the head of National Geographic Photography calls me up and says, I hear you're going down to uh, Columbia uh, to look for this frog. And we have a, a fellow, uh, as a friend of a friend, can you take him as an assistant? He's a student who wants to become a nature photographer. And I say, sure, you know, if he likes nature and he speaks Spanish, perfect. Anyway, I fly down to Cali, Colombia, and um, meet my assistant. I will call him Antonio Banderas. <laughs> He's uh, really a sweet looking guy. And uh, he, uh, we're looking out from the hotel into the park, and he starts to freak out. He goes, God, what are those flashing lights? And I say, uh, those are uh, fireflies. He said, are they dangerous? And I go, have you ever camped? What do you do? He says, well, uh, at the moment, I'm a male stripper in, in Miami, but I want to be a nature photographer. <laughs> OK, looking good. Check into the room. And I'm leaping through, you know, they have, in the rooms of uh, five-star hotels, they got those fancy uh, little guidebooks. And I'm looking through, okay, room service, uh, hotel calling, valet, blah, blah. Oh, wait, a hotel doctor? And this is the first clue that there's a, uh, an omen that there's a, something ahead, I think. Hotel doctor, okay, gunshot wounds, $110. <laughs> Knife stabbing, $70. And Antonio looks over my shoulder and says, hey, those are good prices. <laughs> we fly the next day to Guapi. This is the staging point to get to the frog. It's a small village. It looks like an oil spill because the whole village is covered with a thin coat of black oil and reflects rainbows everywhere. Uh, we walk through the village trying to find out where we can rent a boat. And uh, Every time we walk by the center of town, the single prostitute on the balcony runs forward and starts screaming at us like this, showing off her wares. <laughs> we were the most excitement she'd, she'd ever seen. And Antonia says, I think she likes me best. <laughs> well, we found a boat, a speedboat, and I will call the owner Mr. Mirrored Glasses. He had a long mustache like this. He comes with a sidekick, Sancho, a bodyguard, and he says, well, you know, for my normal use of this boat, I make a lot of money every day. Okay, a little talking, and then the next morning, we arrive at 6 a.m., nobody shows up. The boat eventually comes an hour late. Sancho is dead drunk. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, Mr. Mirrored Glasses can get him motivated as the driver of the boat by slapping him across the back constantly throughout the entire trip. We head out over the ocean, rough waves, eventually find the river that leads us to the frogs. Uh, Sancho smashes three times into the mangroves on the way in. And uh, I find out, this is very useful, 
uh, that this is a great way of correct, co collecting tarantulas. And the tarantulas start raining on us. And you know, if you've ever collected avicularia tarantulas, canopy tarantulas, very hard to get them. So I was very pleased. Good start to the trip. We start up the river. Okay, we're only like a half hour up, and we start bouncing against the bottom, and it's clear that the river is just too low, and we pull over to the side and get out. And I say, well, uh, we, you got us halfway there. Why don't I pay you 50%? And Mr. Mirrored Glasses explodes. <laughs> you Americans! You will never leave Guapi alive. This is what Americans have done to me. And he rips open his shirt. The buttons go flying in both directions. And his chest is covered with old wounds. OK, OK, I'm, I'm about to try to say something. And the boat takes off. And I'm going, well, uh, wait a second. Uh, we, can, uh, we can negotiate. Whoops. And I drop all the money into the river that I had. <laughs> and uh, we're contemplating the fact that the only other way to get out of there was to walk over a mountain chain. And Antonia says, is that easy? And I say, no. <laughs> so we walk to the nearest village, luckily not too far. And I, we go up to the villagers and we say, I would like to uh, 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 be able to borrow a dugout canoe and a guide. And the villagers say, we talk. We go to the lodge, something gets pulled out. It's a container full of a murk, uh, murky white substance that we start drinking. It turns out to be an alcohol made out of coconut milk and human spit. <laughs> Talking consists of drinking in this village. And after three hours of it, we can hardly stand up anymore. And we arrange to get a dugout canoe and someone to take us along next morning. OK. <laughs> We're up there, a couple hours in, boom, scraping ground again. The river is just not full enough with water. So we get out and we start hauling this thing upriver. That night, we sleep out under the stars, admire all those you know, galaxies and so on we keep hearing about. <laughs> next morning, keep dragging the thing. Get to the village, the Embera Choco village, where the frogs are, or at least they're nearby. We go into the village and say, we would like to arrange to see the frog. And the villager says, we'll talk. And I go, oh man, OK. Well, unfortunately, in this village, talking was uh, even more tedious than partying. And it actually involved talking. The Enbaral Choco were very serious about making arrangements correctly. And we spent hours and hours, and then day after day, trying to arrange to see the frog. Luckily, during that time, we managed in the evenings to see how they make the, the blowguns, which are unique to this valley, this kind of blowgun, made out of a uh, certain kind of palm tree and wrapped with a certain vine. That was fun. The only problem was that during the day, during breaks from our talking, they developed a certain game. Because we said, how do you use the blowgun? And they came up with this strategy of like showing us how it's used by shooting darts directly past our ears. And uh, this is fun for approximately 30 seconds. And it just kept going on and on. Eventually, we get permission. And uh, they, you know, they were enjoying this because we looked so alien. And I will actually add at this point that not only did we look so alien, that I had been dragging the canoe in the water for two days wearing shorts and had sunburned so badly that I could not flex my legs. And I was walking around like a huge albino <laughs> Frankenstein in front of these people who had not seen a outsider since 1978. <laughs> OK. I'm going to see the frogs now. Next morning, we take off with our guide. We cross the river. Antonio Banderas has never been in a rainforest before, so I give him a job. OK, you hold the machete. You chop your way through the forest. Unfortunately, he was very meticulous about it and a little slow, and he kept up being behind me and nearly <laughs> chopping my feet off. 
Meanwhile, we are going through a swamp so dense with mud that we were actually in something like quicksand up to our waist. And every time we lifted our leg, we'd make a huge flatulent sound. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this sort of thing. I don't know if you've experienced life in the rainforest with a bunch of guys, but there's nothing more bonding than that kind of effect. <laughs> and then we see the frog. All right, look at this. This is the world's deadly frog. You will die from touching this frog. This frog knows no fear. This frog walks up and goes, hey, why aren't you touching me? Come on, touch, touch me, come on. Touch me, come on. What's the matter? And so I have to photograph the frog, and I have open sores all over my legs, so we wrap my legs with plastic from their, our tent tarp, and Antonio Banderas lowers me to the ground like a plank. Ah, and I forgot the camera demonstration technique for photography, in case you want to take up insect and frog photography. This is how it works. And I lay down like this, and Antonio has to move me back every few seconds, just lift me up and move me back as the frog hops towards me. <laughs> People ask, how far were you from that frog? Well, it's something in the order of an inch. You have to get close to get a good picture. Okay, we get the frogs, we actually get a bunch of frogs. We head back, and uh, we learn how they handle frogs. First of all, they have to put them in a special basket. You only use this basket for frogs. Here is someone using our, our, our poisoning a dart. This is the only time I saw the Indians ever touch a frog. This guy was probably just trying to be macho, and his whole arm went numb. <laughs> Other frogs in South America, poison dart frogs, similar species, you have to actually cook the frog to get enough poison for a dart. This frog, you just touch the dart to the back of a live frog, and it's good for a year. <laughs> okay, back in, back in town, life isn't looking too good. First of all, news has come from downriver that the uh, Mr. Mirrored Glasses is waiting for us in Guapi. He's actually sending messages. At the same time, uh, the people of the village are concerned that Antonio is there to steal their women. This is due to the fact that every time a female walks near him, he starts doing one-arm handstands. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going, walking around like this. <laughs> so they say, Okay, you got to get out of here. This ain't good. We leave. I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but we eventually get to Guapi. We're back in Guapi. We go to the hotel. Uh, we didn't cr cross the mountain chain because we had another strategy. We had learned the people of Guapi are terrified of this frog, so we arrived at the hotel with our blowguns and a basket of frogs. <laughs> Walk to the front of the hotel and say, can we check in? And they say, hotel is full. Now, nobody stays at this hotel. <laughs> so we're a little worried, and the fellow at the front desk says, but you have a room at the other end of town. Okay, we walk across the town. The prostitute doesn't even look at us. <laughs> we see Sancho, the assistant, uh, notice us and scurry off, but we're carrying our frogs, and we find the room they've given us. It is in the front of a building ground floor, it has no front wall. It's a big rectangular opening with a place to sleep on the ground inside of it. So we spend all that night uh, basically on the ground awake with our blow darts at ready. As people are crossing back and forth in the low light, and we see Sancho among them. And uh, by dawn, we are totally exhausted, as you might imagine, and we take our frogs, to the only place we could think of going, and that is the single telephone in Guapi. We come up to the telephone, it's in the middle of the public plaza, and people start gathering around us. When we test it out, it's not working. Okay, I'm just gonna improvise. Hello, US Embassy, send troops to Guapi. We have trouble here in Guapi. People must, the troops must come to Guapi. Trouble in Guapi. Okay, everyone around us starts, uh, we hear, conversations everywhere, and they start to disperse. 
In the distance, we see some thugs gathering with guns. And we're trying to figure out what to do. We were totally exhausted. We cannot even think straight. We were just stuck there. We don't want to go back to our hotel room. And <laughs> just what do we do? OK, Sancho shows up with a group of men. And at the other end of the plaza, suddenly emerges a whole group of police officers in a tight formation carrying machine guns. They walk up to us, circle us, and say, would you like an escort to the airport? <laughs> and I think a moment and say, hey, why not? <laughs> so that's my story. Thanks so much.